Welcome to Lead Up, Leadership Gwinnett's podcast dedicated to showcasing initiatives that truly impact our community and the incredible leaders behind them. I'm your host, Logan Serrano, Director of Marketing and Communications for Leadership Gwinnett. Today I have joining me Nick Messino, President and CEO of the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce and graduate of the Leadership Gwinnett Class of 2011. Welcome, Nick. Thanks, Logan. Happy to be here. So Nick is no stranger to economic development and community relations. He served as Georgia's youngest mayor for the city of Swanee for eight years and then served as the chief economic development officer for Partnership Gwinnett. And in that role, he helped bring over 15,000 jobs and more than a billion dollars of investment to Gwinnett. Um, He often travels uh, internationally to represent Gwinnett and Georgia on uh, business issues, economic development issues and government as well. So I also wanna point out that the Chamber is a longtime sustaining partner of Leadership Gwinnett and is actually where Leadership Gwinnett began back in the 80s. So our office is still housed in the Chamber, um, but we are a separate uh, nonprofit now, but we love our Chamber friends. So I'm delighted to have Nick joining us on our podcast today um, to talk a bit about his leadership journey and to tell us a bit about um, the Chamber's role in the community. So Nick, I'm gonna dive right into it. Tell us about your journey from mayor to partnership Gwinnett to the chamber and anything else in between. Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I moved to Gwinnett County at 23 years old with my college and high school sweetheart and started our career here. Um, I lived in an apartment, ended up building our first house in Swanee. And I was just working uh, like everyone else uh, trying to get a start on our, our lives and our careers. And one day there was an issue in Swanee that piqued my neighbor's interest, my interest. And I went to a city council meeting and I literally got hooked. I went to like the next 10 city council meetings, thought it was really amazing that you could give input in your community and actually affect change. Uh, and I was encouraged to apply for a position on the planning zoning board of appeals. I got it. Uh, I was on that position for two and a half years. Uh, I think they thought I was older. I was 25 at the time, but I wore a suit every day from work and I'd go to the council meetings after work. And uh, they, 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 put, they made me actually chair of the board and I, I just really got into it. I loved it. I, mean, I just loved you could, you know, volunteer and be a part of your community and actually, you know, help with the direction of where your community was going. So that led to someone suggesting I run for city council when the mayor was not going to run again. And I went around to the different council members and I said, hey, are you going to run for mayor? If not, if you are, I, I'll run for your seat. Uh, and they all ganged up on me and said, we think you'd be a great mayor. Uh, I was 28 years old at the time. Uh, I, I ended up running unopposed, got elected at 28. Uh, and over the next, and, and I ran twice unopposed both times. So I was mayor of Swanee for eight years. In my third year as mayor in 2003, um, the Gwinnett Municipal Association, which is a, an organization of all the cities in Gwinnett, uh, elected me to represent them on the Gwinnett Chamber Board of Directors. And so I served on the Gwinnett Chamber Board of Directors. I was 32 at the time, and I was representing Gwinnett cities. And from there, I started to meet you know, all the movers and shakers at the chamber, and uh, people saw, oh, okay, this guy's a business person who has volunteered to be the mayor of his town. And we were pro-business in Swanee. It just, we were really super focused on mixed use developments and saving green space and open space. And while I was mayor, when I got elected, we had 15 acres of parkland. Uh, When I left, we had 350 acres. I just, Suzanne and I, my wife and I just saw you and your mom uh, months ago uh, going through Sims Lake Park, which when I was mayor. Parks, yes. (laughs) Purchase of that property uh, at the kitchen table of the guy that owned it previously when I was mayor, along with Dave Williams, uh, who's another uh, leadership Gwinnett alum. And uh, Dave was on the city council at the time. Um, And and so I I was able to make a ton of connections um, and people were really, I think they were interested that here's an elected person who also does business. Uh, And I I, I stood out just because I was, I had some youth to make. Um, So fast forward to 2006, I was asked to serve on this study committee, on this economic strategy, the ca- the city, sorry, the, the county and the chamber were looking at. Um, and 
in the end, they rolled out this new thing called Partnership Gwinnett uh, in the beginning of 2007, and they needed someone to run it. And so I got a call from the chamber president saying, hey, let's have, uh, let's have breakfast. And I had breakfast and before the breakfast is over, I'm saying yes to be the, uh, the new head of this new division of the chamber called Partnership Gwinnett. And um, I've been here uh, for 14 years. Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, I think I think my anniversary is tomorrow, uh, which uh -huh. I know this is going to air later. Uh, today's February 4th, tomorrow's February 5th. And I'll be, I'll be in my 15th year at the chamber. And I, I've loved every minute of it minute minute of it and I've never once felt like I was driving to work I never dreaded pulling into the parking lot I love it love the people I work with I love this community I lived in Gwinnett uh consecutively for 27 years which is more than half my life wow that's awesome I've actually been here since I was in fifth grade um I grew up in Swanee I think while I was while I was growing up in Swanee I remember the um, Swanee got named like one of the best cities to live in, maybe even multiple times. I think while you were mayor, I don't, I can't remember the timeline, but Swanee is a great city and we just love having you leading through um, your role at the chamber and you've just done some incredible work. So thank and, you. And well, can I yeah. clarify? Oh, specifically in August of 2007, Swanee was named by Money Magazine and CNN as the number 10 best small town in America. There you go. That's it. Money Magazine. We'll include I, the link or something. <laughs> I watched it being announced on, live on Good Morning America in our break room. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I remember it was a big deal. So that's pretty awesome. And it is a great place to live. But um, jumping back to the chamber, what is the purpose and mission of the chamber? I get that question a lot. Um, some people still think I work for the chamber. I, I don't, but they're like, what is the chamber? What does the chamber do? Yeah, I totally get it. Uh, Logan, if you're not in kind of this thing that we do every day, make you know making the sausage here in the community uh i remember uh it was 2008 we were at a christmas party and i heard my wife say oh my husband works at gwinnett county <laughs> i said i don't listen i love gwinnett county i don't work there i work at the chamber yeah. and she she couldn't explain what i did either uh, it's, a, it's a little confusing uh, so the gwinnett chamber has literally one of the easiest mission statements ever champion business we we're not the champions of business we champion gwinnett's business Every the 10,000 sole proprietors, the 24 to 25,000 uh, different businesses in Gwinnett, we champion them. We are there to make sure that there's not local or state or federal policy that is keeping them from being successful. Uh, we are making sure that their challenges are met, that the community and, and the, the county chair, the county administrator loves when we talk about, we wanna make sure government doesn't get in their way from being successful in hiring Gwinnettians, raising the values, of their salaries and income in Gwinnett, because all of this happens together. It's not government against business, education against uh, the county. We're all in this together, working together. I love Leadership Gwinnett because it's also training and empowering and equipping uh, folks for the future. I was so proud when I was able to get into Leadership Gwinnett. And I love that I've, I've spoken to almost every glance class uh, and I love connecting with people that care about our community. Um, but so we, in a way, when I try to explain like to people younger, uh, people know what an association or a group or a club is, you know, North Gwinnett High School, where you're a graduate of and my children are graduates of lots of clubs, there's like 200 clubs. I always just say to younger people, it's like a club for business people. Um, and and I, I don't want that. That might sound a little hoity toity or snooty, but really we're it's, it's a group of people that care about their community that have like interest. Um, and they do a lot of things outside of business. And we can talk about that as well. But uh, it's, it's a group that people that care about our community and our business community. I think that's awesome. And it totally kind of goes into my next question. And by the way, I love that mission. We champion business. I mean, that is awesome how you've narrowed that down. It's perfect. Um, in that same vein, talk a bit about the various programs and initiatives of the chamber, like Partnership Gwinnett, maybe some advocacy advocacy work that y'all are doing, um, your membership services, and even some events. Like I know you even go to DC, things like that. Um, tell us about that. Sure. Um, I, I will say we, we are unique. Uh, I, I, we're a bit of a unicorn. We are the largest suburban chamber in the United States. Um, if you've ever been past our building at 6500 Sugarloaf Parkway, that is the largest chamber building in North America. Um, 
So if someone's only experience is the Gwinnett Chamber, you know, we have a steakhouse on top. Uh, we do all these 300 programs a year. If that's someone's experience and they move somewhere else, I feel bad for wherever they move. They're, 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 I think they're going to get disappointed. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty unique. And so just kind of knocking off a couple of the ones you mentioned, we, we have a uh, active annual public policy initiative. We have a, um, uh, a gentleman that works for us who is our public policy manager, Paul O. Um, and we create a, a list of public policy initiatives, uh, things that we're for, or maybe that we're against, but typically we're for this. We're for Gwinnett. We want to see um, environmentally correct development happen. We're for uh, making sure that all of Gwinnett is rising together. Um, and we list that through our public policy process. That is all uh, available for anyone to see at, at GwinnettChamber.org. Um, and we do lobby. Um, uh, we're not we're not registered lobbyists. We do go to D.C. once a year, speak to our Congress members. Uh, we absolutely go to the uh, to the Gold Dome here in Georgia. Uh, I was with almost all of the cities a few nights ago through the Gwinnett Municipal Association. We interact. I had lunch yesterday with the county chairperson. Uh, we interact with our county, our city, state, and federal officials on a weekly basis, uh, making sure they're making decisions. And really, it's almost a lot of the times they're reaching out to us is, what does the business community think about this before we make this decision or create a policy? And so it's a lot of very open communication and it's flowing. And if someone thinks, oh, business and big government shouldn't be talking and they're co we're collaborating for the good of the community. Um, and, 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 I, and I did that when I was mayor of Swanee and I looked at, this, uh, at the chamber as someone that I could talk to and get their opinions and thoughts before we created policy. And we've done that for the 14, 15 years I've worked here. We do a lot of other things. Um, Gwinnett County is made up 85 to 90% of Gwinnett's businesses are have 50 or less employees. So tons of small businesses, many of them don't have an HR department or a training department. So we become that for many of those companies uh, with our monthly forums, uh, our, our ongoing programmatic events. We're also a way where they can market themselves. Uh, many people think about uh, the Chamber of Commerce and networking. And I will say, good luck finding a place that you can network better than the Gwinnett Chamber. Again, 300 events a year. Uh, it really, really is amazing. We have some exclusive trips uh, for our board uh, where we go uh, on a strategic leadership trip on an annual basis. We go visit other communities in North America to learn their, spe their best practices. And sometimes, we look at things that they made a mistake on so we can avoid those same mistakes to make Gwinnett better. We've done that for, this will be our 16th trip. We'll be going to Seattle uh, in the fall. Um, the, the other thing is, and you mentioned is partnership Gwinnett, which is what brought me to the chamber uh, in 2007. Uh, this is the, the, the sales and marketing arm of Gwinnett County, the chamber, the municipalities. We are out marketing Gwinnett to the, to the United States, to the world, as a place to uh, expand or relocate your business and to grow within our community. We are sharing the incredible talent we have today and the talent we'll have tomorrow through Gwinnett County Public Schools, GGC, Gwinnett Tech, Buford City Schools, and our incredible private schools. We are out there making sure people know that we're a business solution location for them. Um, so really proud about all the things that we do. I hope I covered enough for uh, your viewers. No, that's great. I, I just wanted people to know that this isn't just people selling to the same people in, a, you know, the same room once a week. I mean, you guys are huge advocates and champions for um, our community, for business, for small business owners. And then you're out there advocating and um, helping push some policy that's helpful as well. So I just think that's incredible. What an incredible resource for our community. Um, I heard you once say that the chamber is the first responder for business continuity. Even through the pandemic, the chamber has been hard at work getting Gwinnett back to work. So tell us a bit about that. Y'all did some incredible stuff during, um, you know, the beginning of the pandemic and through now. Thanks, Logan. Uh, it's funny as, you know, while all that was happening in mid-March, uh, you know, who, we thought maybe it'd be over in a few weeks and you just didn't know. And then as things continued to get worse uh, and exacerbate, uh, we, we thought about all those first responders that were there. They didn't have a chance to work remotely. Uh, they were there out on the field. And we started thinking, how can we respond? And when uh, the city of Atlanta did a work uh, from home order, or sorry, but a stay at home order, and then the counties 
uh, in the cities of Gwinnett worked together and they did it a few days later, we realized we needed to be there for the business community. And we immediately opened up a 24 hour, seven day a week call center. Um, I answered the phone at, at six in the evening, 10 in the evening. I even got a call at two in the morning and I answered the phone and the person hung up. I think they were just testing to see if we were. <laughs> we were uh, and, and, and so, you know, and I was on a lot of Zoom calls and talking to people and we just kind of coined the phrase that we were the first responders of business continuity. And people were not sure were they allowed to be out? What does it mean? We were creating letters to say, yes, you have, you, you are, you are, you know, uh, you need to be, you're essential. And so we would walk them through the list of essential businesses. Do you fit in this group? Do you fit in that group? And they had employees that were afraid to come to work. They, they thought they would get arrested. Um, and there was some, you know, uh, diff there was, some, there was an agency in the community that said that they were going to prosecute people that were violating the stay at home order. Nobody really remembers that, but it was like, we blew up sent, you know, employees and companies saying, are we allowed to be there? We had to actually educate them on what's the difference between political rhetoric and then actually the truth. And really, and, and so people had the legal right to go to work uh, and they didn't know. I mean, it was all, this is all, this is all of our first pandemic. Uh, so we went together, but we were there answering the phone. Uh, there was a third of us uh, that were here. We never missed a day uh, during that uh, March, April, May. We brought our teams back uh, between May 5th and about June 1st, we were fully open, fully staffed, following all the appropriate PPP rules. I mean, we we did it all. Uh, we, we were learning as we we're going. And actually, I'll share the story that I haven't shared with many people. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've traveled a lot recruiting companies. I've been to China 19 times, Korea 13 times, all over Europe. Well, Korea and China were hit first, right? Uh, but they also opened up. They started opening up. So I started reaching out to business leaders in Korea and China saying, what are your policies? And I, and I would like, you know, send a little outline of what we're thinking about doing. This is like April of 2020. And it's funny is people are still talking about going back to work. Uh, and we're coming up on our, you know, it's two year anniversary. I'm like, I don't get how you're not back to work. You're yeah. either going back or you're not. Uh, and at this point, they've chosen not to. Uh, but I don't think that's for health reasons. I think that's a lot of other reasons. That'll, that'll be another podcast. Uh, <laughs> but, but literally, I had, I mean, I, I vetted this through all these people that were already back to work in Asia and uh, built a really strong, it was interesting is we were sharing it with other people, the health department, GGC's nursing school. People were getting back to me saying, oh my God, this is great. This is the most comprehensive back to work. So people started borrowing ours. And then we're like, well, why don't we just share it with our whole membership? And I would go to places and see our policy and their, their business, uh, which I was really proud of. Uh, this, again, it was that's just another thing some company had to figure out. Well, we kind of figured it out. Um, I'm really proud that we, you know, for years now have worked together. You know, when, when it spikes, like with the Delta variant, Omicron, we in public, you know, we'll put our mask back on, you know, when, when things are spiking, but when things go a little bit back to normal, we ease off. Um, and so I, I love the county's policy, the school system uh, and, and the county is when things spike, you adjust, uh, you ramp back up and then you adjust back down. It all seems like common sense uh, responses, but we're really proud of the work we've done. That seems like a million years ago uh, because We've been back. We just had one of our best years ever, and uh, things are really rocking and rolling over here at the Chamber. On that note, um, tell us a Chamber success story. To, uh, to your own horn a bit. Well, well, thanks. Uh, if any of the listeners know, I'm probably the most, most humble person anyone's ever met. So it's just so uncomfortable for me to toot my own horn. Uh, but I, but I would tell you that was a little facetious, and everyone knows that. It was. <laughs> the Chamber, our staff our members, our board members. It is just such a great, uh, you know, everyone's for Gwinnett. Everyone is, you know, how can we help? Let's all pitch in, whatever the issue is. But th this year was really interesting. Uh, I'm talking about 2021. You just didn't know, you know, you're trying to plan in the, in the fall of 2020. What is 2021 going to be? We ended up having one of the most successful years in almost any measurable ca uh, category. The most people ever went on a strategic leadership visit. The most folks attending events. Um, I mean, just financially, it was a successful year. Uh, it, it was in regards to people coming back. It was a successful year. We we started in the beginning, late 2020, beginning of 2021, actually helping other organizations uh, with their uh, virtual 
uh, option where you'd be in person and remote, those kind of hybrid things. We were teaching other organizations how to do it. Uh, if they didn't have the tech, we would you know, try to help them with the tech or, or bring our tech to them. And it's so interesting is by about midsummer, uh, people stopped tuning into our virtual Zoom options because they felt comfortable because they saw that we were, we were the appropriate amount of spread out, masks when things weren't uh, as safe as they could be. And uh, we just, in regards to attendance, we, we switched things. Uh, state of the, the county last year, we went and did it at 12 Stone Church, which seats over 2,000 people, I think. So we could super spread out. It was great. Uh, everyone was spread out. Everyone was comfortable. No, no COVID spread at any of our events. And we're really proud of that. The results speak louder than the words. And uh, it's, it's just been, a, last year was just an incredible year and it felt good. I, when we asked people to come back, uh, I'm thinking back now, May of 2020, uh, I had some people that were not excited. Uh, and then like, they come stop by my office, like in the second week. And they're like, Nick, thank you for having us come back. I was at home hunkered down watching the news with my parents or watching the news with my significant other. And I'm so glad to be out of the house because they just didn't know how serious we were going to be about our roles and policies. And we take it very seriously. I mean, you can't take someone, you got to take health, uh, you know, lives and livelihood has to, there has to be a balance. And I'm really proud of what we've done in the last two years. And we're excited about this year. I, I really hope this uh, last variant, knock on wood, will be the last thing we have to worry about. <laughs> I know we will see, but you guys truly have been amazing um, adjusters and pivoters and, and you've been out there doing it nonstop. So um, it's, it's just awesome seeing you guys and, you know, being housed in the chamber, we get to see all that you're doing and attending your events and you guys are just killing it. So that's good stuff. Um, we're going to switch a little bit and talk more about you and um, ask you a couple of personal leadership questions. So if you could start a business tomorrow, what would that business be? What should I uh, buy stock in? <laughs> well, without a doubt right now, uh, the, the thing that's challenging every business leader, every governmental leader, nonprofit leader is hiring, recruiting, retaining their, their staff. Um, and you can't have one without the other. You can't just be focused on, I got to staff up. What are you going to do with that staff when they get here? Are you going to put professional development plans together for them? Uh, are you going to have a place for them to go? Are they, are they going to be able to mobilize and move up within the organization? Uh, you know, our two organizations, Leadership Gwinnett, the Gwinnett Chamber, we're not huge companies. I mean, we're, we're pretty small organizations, so it's, it's hard for us to go up the ladder when there's let's say five people or 30 people. Uh, it's, just, it's just, there's opportunities aren't there, but what can we do? Um, and obviously you have an incredible uh, boss, Lisa's the greatest and she, she is definitely, I've seen both you uh, and Brooke grow under her leadership. And that's what we all have to do as leaders is help our employees grow and be the best they can be, even though I can't promote them up to, because we're not a gigantic organization. Uh, so we're really, you got to invest in recruiting, retaining, paying good, uh, in competitive wages, and then really invest in that employee and making sure every one of our managers is investing in their employee and making sure I'm investing in my leadership team. Uh, so what would the company look like? It'd be some sort of recruiting, uh, headhunting agency, but also would just as importantly be consulting to making sure that once you've hired this new person, you onboarded them properly, and then you're pouring into them. And you send them through leadership and glance one at. <laughs> right. Yes. Actually. Well, I love that. That's really interesting. And, yeah. And maybe when at young professionals. There you go. GYP. There are peeps. Yes. Aren't they graduating soon this class? I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, uh, I think we're I, I think we got a couple of months. Okay. Okay. That sounds about right. So um, what's the biggest challenge that you're facing in your role right now? And how are you tackling it, Nick? Well, I it's a, literally, I just told you which business I was going to start if yeah. I was to. They were, I was being forced to start one. Um, we, we, we had attrition uh, uh, last year. We were down by the end of the year, four people. So we got to get back. We got to get those positions filled. Plus we planned from the, from the beginning of the fall that 2022 was going to be a growth year for us, an investment year. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to say we had nine openings on January 1st. We were down to seven openings. Uh, and I know there's a lot of great solid candidates in the pipeline. So our, our challenge is the same challenge as every one of our members, uh, every one of our partners. It's, it's, it's hiring and recruiting and retaining top talent. Uh, we've always been super flexible with people. 
uh, anytime that someone needed to be somewhere uh, on a you know ad hoc basis, the answer has always been yes. Um, and, but we actually just formally came out with our first official work remote policy. Um, and you know everyone has a million questions and they don't like the answer, which is that's between you and your manager. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's there's it's it's it, it has structure to it, but also has flexibility because we're a very forward facing organization in the community, just like Leadership Connect is. And we feel like you should be here, but there should be there could be a million reasons why your specific position or the work that you do could be remote. And remote doesn't mean at home. It could be somewhere else. It could be somewhere in our community. We're flexible, but that's really between the employee and the manager to determine uh, based on the needs of that job and that department. I think that's really smart and really awesome to hear. We do that at Leadership Gwinnett as well. And um, we do, we have an incredible boss. Lisa Zakin's amazing. So um, with, I think that's great. That's very progressive. Um, finally, Nick, how can community leaders support the chamber and um, the business community? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the obvious thing that somebody would think I would say is join the chamber. I'm not going to yeah. say that. But, but really, is is as when we have a message for the community, it is usually something that is overall good for the community. SPLOS, special local option sales tax, there's a one cent of our six cent sales tax that is for the school system. And then there's one that is uh, split up by a population formula for, for the most part between the county and the city. We are for SPLOS. It has raised $2 billion for each of those groups, uh, for, for the county cities together. And then uh, for the school system, and then it saved almost a billion dollars uh, in interest. And to be able to, as a community, save a billion dollars in interest and be able to have that platform to build capital improvements, schools, uh, technology, fire stations, police departments, uh, it, uh, parks and rec, uh, libraries. I mean, it's just an incredible thing. When we, when we say, when we get out in front on a, on a political issue like that, um, that's where the community we really would like for them to to be listening to what we're sharing. Mm -hmm. um, it, the and, and there may be a time where there is something that we're not for, uh, but we have methodically thought through it before we take a position. Uh, we have been in the eight times the transit has been on a ballot in Gwinnett County over the last I think forty years almost. We've always been for it. Uh, no decision has been made. Uh, at the, it's the county that makes the decision to put it on the ballot. Um, I, we are for transit expansion. We are for expansion and connectivity to MARTA, which some people are like, oh, I don't know what their issue is with MARTA. But I'll say this, most CEOs and business leaders I speak to want themselves and their employees to be connected to the region with transit options. And today, we do, people talk about options. We have one option. You either don't go somewhere or you drive. Walking and bike riding, I don't want to offend the one in a you know, 100,000 bike riders, but I go to work, I've been working in Gwinnett for 27 years. I don't see a bike rider even once a month. So we have two choices. You either don't go somewhere or you drive. And we've yeah. got to give people another option, not only just to get connected to the region, but for Gwinnettians to get around in Gwinnett and wherever you need to go. Uh, so I, we need connectivity. That is important. We will continue to suggest and encourage and maybe lobby uh, for uh, Gwinnett to expand its uh, Beyond what what is currently planned, uh, so th those are so that that's is when we're when we have a message, you know, we're, we're, I think we do a pretty good job of communicating. Uh, please listen. Uh, we think it's important for everybody to vote uh, and 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 be registered to vote and get connected in their their, their local community, not just uh, on these big issues, but also small issues and whatever's going on in your little corner of Gwinnett too. Yeah, And that, that's how I got started. I just paid attention to something that was going on adjacent to my neighborhood. Uh, I was 25 years old. I had no idea where that would lead me. Uh, and, I, and I'm just so blessed to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. And get involved. First of all, educate yourself and then engage yourself. I think a lot of people have their opinions they want to share, but they don't do anything about it. Go get involved. So I think that's fantastic. And we're all out of time for today, but thank you, Nick, so much for spending the morning with me, giving our audience the chance to get to know you a little bit better and to better understand um, this incredible asset and resource in our community, which is the Chamber. So to learn more about the Chamber, please visit their website, GwinnettChamber.org. They've got some great resources and events listed there. Um, and thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Lead up.